Um, let us start with uh, the satsang today, which what I've done is to, at the same time, uh, retake uh, the meditation course in which we were involved, uh, the so-called module P02, which, uh, you know, um, we had to some kind interrupt it uh, to get uh, the attention on the development. But it's very important that um, uh, you use uh, this tool and find all sorts of mistakes because we need all the beta testing without you working on it as students. So please incentivate the rest of participants and everybody to sign in and, uh, you know, try to send messages, uh, sign in for a group because there will be bugs and every help uh, is appreciated. So, continuing with the discourse, I am going to share the, the screen to show you what I've put in the, in, in the, in this course, which is the one we are following in the week that we are restarting, that is week number three. So you have these three lessons which are dealing with circumstances. This is a lesson prepared by Fernando. It's a very interesting one to read. And it has a very interesting song and video. So this is the beginning. Because what we are going to speak today about is precisely that. Dealing with circumstances, dealing with your karma, dealing with what is happening around you and you don't like. Dealing with that with which is the thing that gives us more problems. So, uh, you know, there are, this is the first lesson. The, se the, the second lesson is how to face life's problems. The third lesson is called Karma Yoga. The fourth lesson is called Is Life Problematic? Now, Is Life Problematic is also a satsang from Guru Raj. And uh, what I'm going to do today is go to the last lesson of this uh, week, which will be dedicated. And you can, you know, go through all this material during the week. And the practices for the week three were the old practices of the week three. I would suggest that regarding meditation practices uh, you do the meditation practices that you are doing unless you are trying to uh, gain again uh, gain again regularity in doing your meditation in that case do the practices that are there in in week three so what i'm going to do today is um, Put this video of Guru Raj, which I will be I will be stopping from time to time, uh, and I will be adding some explanations. Now the the main thing the main thing in uh, the main problem that we as 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 normal human beings face every every day is the appreciation that circumstances in which you are living uh, that include the government of your country the person that surrounds you in your neighborhood the people that surround you in your work the events that come to your life uh, including pandemias or illnesses. We look at that as something which is, uh, which has nothing to do with us, as with what we regard ourselves to be. But that is really a misunderstanding of the situation. Because what you are and your circumstances in reality is basically the same thing. Um, one cannot exist without the other. And in fact, 
everything you are today is a result of a long process of evolution. You can look it as the law of karma, which is a poetical way to describe it. But you can use also the scientific knowledge and try to understand what evolution means by trying to visualize in your mind that string that if you pull from it, you go back to the Big Bang. And you can see how there is a force pushing and learning and learning and learning and learning and learning and learning. And this learning and the circumstances that created the learning created everything that you were born to when you were born. You were born in that family because that is the evolutionary status of that, say, genetical line, if you want to look at it like that or because that is your karma, if you want to look at it in a more poetical way, but basically is that that force that is pushing to learn is continue, continuous pushing. And you are faced to circumstances that create all the impressions through which you understand the circumstances that you are living in. Because you understand this world and you understand the circumstances that you are living in, because you received these impressions of those circumstances in which you were born that implanted you a language, concepts, um, values, uh, you name it. Everything that in your mind makes you understand this world. So in reality, the world that is surrounding you and you are kind of mirror images, one of the other. So the main problem that we have when facing life's problems is that we feel separate from them. Um, Byron Katie, um, who is this woman that wrote this book, uh, Loving What Is, that if you don't know the book, I have not read it, but you know, I only read the first pages, really. But I got the gist of it because th that woman was right in, in the gist of it. Well, I read the first pages and Rupa, who he was very acquainted with that, did it on me and I realized that that method was very, very helpful to understand many times what happens to us with this confusion as feeling different or separate from what is happening from us uh, in our circumstances. And one of the things she says, this Byron Katie, is that uh, uh, when you want more of that problem in your circumstances is really when you have overcome the problem. Uh, when you don't want the problem anymore means that you need more of it <laughs> in reality. In other words, it's a, um, a reality which has been taught in many different ways, which is uh, you have to learn to welcome problems. You have to welcome praise or critics. Treat them the same. You have to be equanimous with both things because both things are you. And both things are needed. And it's like yama ni yama, you know, or sorry, yama ni yama, sattvas and tamas. You need light and you need obscurity. You need both because that is the movement, that is manifestation. And uh, you don't need to, uh, to, it's terrible to try to escape from problems. Uh, you have to learn to love problems because that's what makes life interesting in reality. A life without problems is a, a dull, dull life. So having said this, I'm going to put this satsang where Guru Raj, which is kind of the end of this week's uh, training, which is, you know, thinking about these things, uh, which is where most of us uh, suffer, you know, we suffer because um, we don't think that uh, the external world that surrounds us is what it should be, and then we suffer. Because if we realize that the external world, 
that surrounds us is, you know, the expression of God, then where would the problem be? So in reality, in reality, the problem is in the complaint. In reality, the problem is that you think that that external world that is surrounding you has nothing to do with you. You are another thing. <laughs> you, your little eye. And you are not. Your little eye in reality is composed. This is a composition of the same, of the same material, of the same clay. Okay, so let's go with the video. Let me share the screen first. Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I didn't do it right. Sorry, sorry. Perfect guru Raj. Oh, oh, what oh. is the difference between a human life and a godly life? What can be done with a human life to make it less problematic? To make it less what? To make it less problematic. Problematic. Ah. So you think human life is problematic, is it? Why is it problematic? The reason why you find human life to be problematic is because you create a distinction in your mind that human life is apart from divine life. The day when man realizes that human life is none other than God life, there would be no problems at all. Problems only come about because your mind tells you all the time because of previous patternings that my life is human and insignificant and of no value, while that which has value is the divine life. Now that is the greatest fallacy perpetrated upon man by all kinds of theologies throughout the ages and throughout the world. If theology had not become a business and had to start off with the central principle that man you are divine and would have trained you over these thousands of years that have passed that man you are divine your problems would have not been there so what are you you are nothing but a puppet So, what Guru Raj is explaining here is this very same concept, which is, you think you are the doer and that you are separate, but you don't move a single of your molecules. Your molecules move all by themselves. There are certain rules that rule this nature, this manifestation, which is the manifestation of the manifesto, the the the, the incarnated God, let's put it that way, the manifestation of the manifesto, is governed by laws that keep balance all the time of everything. Everything is balanced. Your circumstances, the country you live in, even included the pandemic we are going through worldwide, is perfectly balanced with the circumstances, with our setup, with the things that have to happen and they don't happen, and they happen by themselves, like everything else, because we live in the impression that you are the doer, but you are the doer of what? What, what is it that you do? You are the doer of your own thoughts? No, your own thoughts is just the churning of previous patternings and and things that are there implanted that, you know, have their own mobility, their own dynamics. 
uh, and the same happens with every process in your body, the blood circulation, you name it. Everything is working by itself. And this is the expression of God. And this is divine life, which is none other than human life. It's just a matter of perspective. So continuing with the video, and the strings are pulled by the people in power. And if they don't pull strings, they would not have the business that they are conducting. I was saying in some Saksang, not so long ago, somewhere in America, I think, that the two greatest businesses and the richest companies in the world is the church and the insurance company. The church promises you heaven and salvation after you are dead and the insurance company promises you a lump sum of money after you are dead. But don't you see that life with all its beauty itself is divine? Since you woke up this morning, hmm, how many hundreds of things have you seen around you? And tell me very honestly, that out of the hundreds of things you have seen around you, from the time you woke up this morning till now, has your mind ever been led by itself to that which is divine? No. You haven't. You have only viewed life according to your own personal perception. And being so channeled and so limited, your perception and conception of everything around you had only what you regard to be of human value, a human life. Yet, just a slight little depth, a slight little depth in the mind that you function with, you will see that human life is not apart from divine life. That you are divine. Everything you perceive is divine and the very organs of perception is divine itself for the object of perception and the subject of perception and the act of perceiving the all but the same. Without the subject, the object cannot exist. Without the act of perceiving, the subject and the object has no existence. <coughs> so, life itself is divine. Life is divine and when we talk of free will and divine will. We create distinctions again and again and again. There is only one will. And that will combines <coughs> what you would regard as free will and what you would regard as divine will. For what is your free will actually? Hmm? You think you are free? Is really free? You are not free. You're in total bondage. There's not a single part of your body or your thought that you can really control. And you say, I got free will. Your heart beats away. The blood circulates in your system. 
called the billions of cells are operating to keep this body together and functionable. Hmm? How much of it are you controlling? And what right do you have then to say, I have free will? Hmm? Within a certain context, you can say, I have free will, I'll, uh, I'll walk down the three flights of stairs, or I shall take the elevator. That's as far as it goes. In to a total mundaneness. But now you tell me what made you decide to take the stairway or the elevator? What element has been functioning there that made you decide the stairway or the elevator? Is it a power which is beyond yourself or is it a power that is within yourself? <clears throat> so, really we are saying the idea is the idea that has been expressed in all traditions in different ways, which is everything is interdependent. You don't have an existence, but in interdependence. And there is no separate existence in reality. Uh, your free will, how far does your free will go? Well, it goes, first of all, when you exercise it, moment by moment, day by day. When you decide to go down the three flights of stairs or the elevator, or when you decide to, uh, or when you go and uh, send a letter to someone or not send it, but what is it? What are the factors that are operating there that made you decide whatever you decide in each moment? You know, are, are you, it is like, you know, when people say, I, I, am, I am a supporter of the Yankees, they leave this as if they were freely, by the exercise of their free will, they would be a supporter of the Yankees. But they are just a supporter of the Yankees because they have previous impressions that conditioned them to be supporter of the Yankees. They were born in a neighborhood or the father was from the Yankees or they went to the school with the Yankees, you name it. Uh, and the same applies to everything. So one, have, one has to transcend these kind of clouds, which is that your personal perception, which is what you think you are, and then you are viewing reality only through the glasses of what you think is valuable for that human personal reality that you believe to be separate and that believes that the Yankees have to win and that day they lose, for example. Uh, uh, you have to go beyond that to see the beauty that is happening behind the scenes, behind the very limited perception that the little eye has of his circumstances that are limited to that personal perception and personal feeling of separateness, which is the main misunderstanding that leads you to suffering and leads you to fight your circumstances and not to simply, you know, accept the challenge that your circumstances are offering you as the adventure of life as the play of God, as the expression of the divine. So let us continue with the, with the video now. Hmm? 
that power is within yourself, functioning all the time through the superconscious level of your mind. All the time. And you are just being deluded by yourself, for yourself, that I am functioning with free will. Because that power, that power that is functioning there all the time, that that push that pushed everything that had to be pushed for you to be here throughout thirteen thousand seven hundred million years of manifestation, understanding manifestation of as this three dimensional reality that we perceive and the totality of it all and of all the dimensions of this reality, whichever they may be, uh, that force is still pulling you. That is the divine you have within you, which in reality is the one that is making the decisions. In your case, and in the case of that person, in your circumstances, that may be telling you something you don't like to hear. Is the same, very same God, is the play of God. Because that is the ultimate decision maker. Not the little eye, the little eye is a conditioned machine. We continue with the video. Bondage. Thinks it is free. And when bondage thinks that it is free, who is the thinker? Someone that is bound. So how can you even think that you are free? When someone does <laughs> And we say life is continuous. The continuity person is a person in movie making that follows up every sequence. Now I'm going to get back the exact expression I had on my face when I said the last sentence. There's no problem, life is no problem at all. We think it is problematic, but life is not problematic. And it only can become problematic if we think it is problematic. And what, what right have you got to say life is problematic? Who is judging life's problems? You are judging life's problems. And when you say, I am judging life's problems, which, which part of me is doing the judgment? Hmm? The higher level of your mind? No. Because at that super conscious level, there's no problem. Hmm? It is the conscious level of your little mind, and even Einstein could only use 8% of the mind. I think it was a bit less. People like to exaggerate. Huh? Only that little percentage is analyzing your entire lifestyle, bringing in the discrimination between a life of divinity and a life of humanity, hmm? and then because of this very dualistic approach, one finds problems. So what do we do to get rid of problems? We go to the approach, we go to a monistic approach. That I and my father are one. We use that approach in every situation and what will result by using that approach in any given situation would be this. 
that I am not the doer. He is the doer. And if, he's, and if he is the doer, who the hell am I to complain about it? Hmm? Because your very complaint is the problem. If you had no complaint, there would be no problem. Hmm? So, we give it all to the divine will that you old chap are the doer and don't you damn well blame me because you control every movement of mine because without you and your energy I cannot even lift up a hand hmm? yes, sir. so that will bring us to acceptance of the situation we are placed when we accept the situation we are placed in automatically we are surrendering we are surrendering not only ourselves but also surrendering what the mind thought was a problem. And once you surrender the problem, how can there be any problem left? You've thrown it out of the window. All right. So. Surrendering to circumstances uh, means basically realizing that those circumstances you are in are the result, you could call it your karma, you could call it the evolutionary lineage, you could call it every action you did and you took since you were born from the womb of your mother till today you can call it of every day you have lived after the other call it what you want but you are in front of yourself of your results so the first thing you have to do is accepting yourself when you hate your circumstances in reality you are hating yourself so surrendering to your circumstances means that you surrender which means that you say, okay, these are my circumstances. Let me take them as they are and welcome them because it is me. <laughs> and I am in this adventure of finding out what is that me. You could do it that way or you could do it. I am in the adventure of knowing God and this is the manifestation of God. So, you surrender to circumstances means that happily and you know determined and and that immediately surrenders the ideas or problems that the mind could have about those circumstances because when you think that circumstances are a problem it is your thought that is telling you that they are a problem and most thoughts that we have every day, just try to observe them, are bullshit, are pure bullshit. So we don't have wise thoughts since we wake up in the morning. <laughs> it's more or less on the contrary. So you know there, there is this learning of discarding thought that is so, so important. So continuing with the video, I am not the doer, he is the doer. Because he is the doer, I accept the circumstance I am in. Because I accept the circumstance that I am in, I surrender myself 
through the circumstance. Hmm? You don't need to surrender yourself to God if you don't believe in one. Just surrender yourself to the circumstance. Hmm? So acceptance and surrender go hand in hand. And when they go walk hand in hand, there comes about a sacrifice. Not a sacrifice of your individuality, but the sacrifice of the sense of individuality. This sacrifice is the sacrifice of the sense of individuality, which means that your individuality is going to be expressed anyhow, anyway. Because if you say clean the engine of your mind, uh, because it's a kind of engine, of that, a mechanism, if you clean it through the purification practices and uh, spiritual practices and meditation techniques that you know, have been assigned to, to you, if you clean that and you let that energy that is pushing this since the universe started push, you will, your individuality will be expressed naturally. You don't even need to think about, you don't have to have a sense of being an individual. So you sacrifice not the individuality, but the sense of being an individual, this sense of individuality. So we continue with the video. And the sense of individuality in this instance would mean that divine life and human life has merged into one. Now, when divine life and human life merges into oneness, what can exist? Hmm? Without sacrificing individuality, what can exist is you, the real you, hmm? in which divinity is merged. You don't go and merge into divinity. You wouldn't know where to find him in the first place. But create the circumstance where he merges into you. And that's why I've said so many, many times over and over again, take one step towards God and he takes ten steps towards you. He is the one is, that is forever seeking you. And you bluff yourself by saying, I am seeking God. You're not. You can only water the plant, but you cannot make the plant grow. Hmm? So you do your bit. Water the garden, that's all and leave it all to divine will. Hmm? With what do you water the garden of life? Hmm? It was very little, really. It was very little. You don't need the whole ocean to water that little garden patch which you call your little life. Hmm? couple of buckets of love. So, that's all. Love filled with sincerity. Love filled with honesty. A feeling when you look into your beloved's eyes, you melt away. And you really feel that deep love. And this very feeling 
has nothing to do with emotionalism. This feeling must become yourself, the totality of yourself, which does not create a feeling, but you become the feeling. Which means that love, many people uh, confuse love by an emotion that is created by yourself when you are, say, in love of someone, to put the typical example that everybody has had that experience. And then you think that is love. No. Love, Ananda, or that energy is not a feeling that you have. It's a is is the feeling that you are. So it's not something that you have, like that you have that feeling like a possession that you can lose, which is what happens with becoming in love that immediately comes fearing of losing it. It is what you are. So there is, you cannot lose it because you are it. So you become that feeling. You are that feeling. But what do you feel? You feel that? Hmm? That is so easy. Hmm? That is why true spiritual masters are there. Hmm? Their buckets, which they give you, have holes that are plugged. And they say, fill the bucket. And after you fill the bucket, just take out those few corks or whatever you call it in this country. Those plugs, that's all. And you just walk around the garden, holding the bucket in your hand. Huh? And it becomes lighter and lighter. No weight is felt huh? as it becomes lighter. Huh? And your garden is watered. So what does this mean? Does this mean you do not force yourself to love, but love becomes life itself. Love can never be forced. That is presumptuous. It just flows by itself. Just unplug. And let the water pour out. And you just walk around admiring the flowers of life. And when you really learn to admire the flowers of life, then you will find that there is no difference between divine life and this life. And when you find that, you will say to yourself that I exist. I will challenge Descartes any time when he said, um, I think, therefore I exist. No, that is totally wrong. I exist and therefore I think. Hmm? And most of the time I'm thinking rubbish. <laughs> I am thinking rubbish 99.9% .9 of the time because I'm separating myself from my father where there's no separation at all. Hmm? I come from his sperm and I'm still part and parcel of the same sperm. I'm not separate from my father. 
observe when we start thinking, and that is the tool we have, uh, apart from other tools that do other things that require no thinking, but with the thinking tool we have, uh, we can... Why are you smiling? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that thinking tool we have, we can use it usefully. So, instead of thinking that I am apart from divinity, use the same thought to say that I am one with divinity. No extra energy is required. That very thought will unpattern all the previous patternings in your mind. Which is basically another way of saying, instead of feeling yourself separate from those circumstances, which are the expression of that divine, including that inner force within you, which in ultimate, which in, was the ultimate decision maker, uh, giving that approximation to everything that I am not separate and I am not separate from my father, then you will unmold all the moldings, all the patternings that make you believe, which is a make believe that you are anything different than what is going on, what is happening, because you are not what you are, that consciousness that becomes aware of what is happening is precisely that divine within you. So we continue with the, with the subject. When you feel with that deep intensity and become that feeling yourself that I and my father or one, you will view life from an entirely different perspective. The first things that will happen is this, that you will rid yourself of anxiety. You will rid yourself of insecurity. You will rid yourself of a feeling of inadequacy. And the greatest thing that you will gain is a total, natural, spontaneous flow. You just need an F to change that low into flow. Just an F. F, 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 F. All you need. Hmm? So stop this nonsense fooling around with other kinds of F's and buggering up the mind. Add the F to the low and flow. It is a term used a lot these days, not back in 1984, in this satsang, when this satsang was made, which is flow, learn how to flow, you know? So it, precisely that, learn how to flow, learn how to serve the waves of life and welcome them. Because, you know, surfing is nice, you know, it's, it's life, it's an expression of life. So we continue with the video. You don't even need to grow. You're fully developed inside you as you are. You just need to unfold. And unfolding means be naked. Throw away all the fancy 
trappings of the mind and be in the presence of the Father, totally naked. In other words, it means that you have nothing to hide. Hmm? Every part of you is divine. Hmm? And to approach divinity, when you are still in a dualistic frame of mind, it will make it much easier for you hmm? to know that I am naked, but not inhabited. Hmm? Naked, which means that you, you know, you get naked, and, but not inhibited, which means you really don't judge yourself as there is something wrong with you. That means not inhibited. Naked and not inhibited. In this way, you can look yourself in the mirror of God because you are always looking yourself in the mirror of someone. When you think about yourself, either you put yourself in front of the mirror of God or you put yourself in front in the mirror of your mother or of your father or of your peers, social peers or you name it. So if you choose the mirror of God, then you have to be naked and not inhibited. And that is an important thing that has to do with the contemplation and meditation techniques. So we get back to the video. And in all my nakedness, which means sincerity and honesty, I'm in the presence of my Father. It's beautiful to be naked, really. There was a um, a nudist party and the editor of uh, the local newspaper got an invitation uh, to send to become himself or send a reporter to the party we were having an annual dinner mm -hmm. so the editor thought <coughs> pardon <coughs> the editor thought just to make a good story, perhaps. So he send, sent a cub reporter. Let's just go and see what all this is about. So next morning when the cub reporter walked in, uh, the editor asked, how was it? So he says, oh, boss, it was exciting. <laughs> it was nice. Everyone there was naked. Hmm? He says, even the butler was naked. So the editor asked, how did you know it was the butler? Because the only way you can know if it's a butler or not is because of the way he dresses. And, you know, from the butler's you know, clothes, you could say, this is a butler. So he says, well, one thing is assured, I knew definitely it was not the maid. <laughs> <laughs> You say this reporter was flowing quite well. <laughs> oh, dear me. Good. And so, there is no difference between human life and a godly life. Invite him into your human life and you see immediately your life will be transformed. Your life will be transformed so much that you would even forget human life. That every breath you take, I talk from personal experience, that every breath you take, you feel as if that you lose the consciousness that you are breathing. You lose the consciousness that you are breathing 
because a higher consciousness exists and that very breath every breath seems to you as if he is breathing and that is self-realization that is finding your self that is man know thyself and that is the answer to the world's greatest question who am I and this question can never be answered so <clears throat> I am opening mics for everybody and you know now we enter into the time of sharing questions uh, whatever Ramon, <clears throat> when yeah. we do the class and we have, we're doing what you're doing. So we're talking to everyone. Now it's time to watch this video. Mm -hmm. What do we do? How do we move from one thing to another? What do you mean? Just logistically in the class. Yeah. Like I'm looking at a screen of all of us gallery view. What do I do now if I am the teacher and I now want to show a video? Ah, now all of you are in the platform today as students. Okay. So you are beta testing students. Okay. The, 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 the teachers will be able to put their videos, put this, put that. So as a student, the only thing you can do when within your lesson is just go the lesson one by one and watch the videos, read the material. If there is a quiz, answer the quiz and whatever the things we put together. In the case of the lesson for this week, I've put, you know, four things all around karma, action, uh, dealing with circumstances, which, uh, you know, is, is good, very good material. Very good material for a teacher to know that you will be able to use as a teacher in the courses you put together once we have that part working. But, you know, we need to... Now what we need to do is beta test the working of a student with courses. So, and you know there are still bugs and that's why I need that you use the application so that, you know, you find bugs like Sandra sent me uh, one the other day about she couldn't uh, mark us complete one lesson. So I want you to use it so that you can find the bugs and you can inform me because it's what better testing it, you know, so that we we have something that we can put in the public. I would like to be able to do it in mid August, like for the public, like big, you no, know? uh, little by little, include teachers, you know, when we have the everything put together for teachers to build their courses, to include the teachers and teach them to build courses and once we have that and then eventually you know send a big email and but with all courses with all the material with everything put together so now is beta testing students you are you are all students of the platform at this very moment Now, more philosophical question. That was logistical. <laughs> I have a question in, um, I, I understand divinity, God, divinity, all that. Guru has 
a way of speaking about divinity as him, as God, like a personal God. And I know that I have taught classes where not everybody believes in God. I don't really feel confident in getting into a kind of discussion regarding personal God, impersonal God, divinity, he as divinity. Can you just speak a Well, little- Guru Raj, what, what he speaks is about him uh, in the sense, but he, in another sense, he might say, I just call it it. You know, uh, uh, Guru Raj speaks about divinity as a neutral force. So he, he speaks about the impersonal. But you, what happens is that you cannot reach to the impersonal, but through the personal. Because to reach to that impersonal energy, you can only do it through that, that first expression of that energy, which is love. And to generate that love, you need an object. And either you love a mountain like Ramana Maharshi, or you love your wife, or you love your God, but you have to love an object first. Because human beings are like that. You need to objectify love, because loving an abstract concept is basically impossible, no? So it's not a matter of discussion, it's a matter of, you know, whatever you believe, my, my darling. <laughs> and if you want to, you know, if, if, if you, you are, a, you know, how do you say, a practic- practicant atheist, well, then you can just devote yourself to E equal MC squared, because, because that is that, you exist. <laughs> right and you are conscious of E equal MC squared. So you, the son, a product of that, um, uh, you know, relationships of energies, uh, 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 know that relationship of energy. So that is your God, devote to him. <laughs> they, they, might, they might be able to do it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ramon, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, following up on what Marie is talking about, I, I'm having a lot of trouble with that in terms of God. Um, from time to time, either when I'm meditating or it just happens, I feel a fullness. I feel um, like there's something very uh, good about me and then it gets sort of projected onto other people who I might be annoyed with, right? That it sort of spreads that I begin to see people in a different light and um, understand them better. And I feel um, affection or love for them, even people that I'm not close to. This feeling that happens every so often. Is, is that what you mean about connecting, that that's the divine in me? So that's the divine. Yeah, exactly, outside. exactly. Okay. The divine in you is that natural mm, goodness that is within, that natural fondness you know there is there is this saying of this guy ways i think is his name i don't know he's he's a psychiatrist that he says every child uh, feeds a, a a duckling a hungry duckling which means that there is something in your nature in nature in fact that makes you feed a hungry duckling, you know, even a cat would maybe take care of them, you know, and it happens in nature, which means that 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 energy, which is the in the beginning, or the first expression, or the purest expression of that divine energy from which everything comes about, is precisely that supraconscious level of the mind. And when you are there, you see no problem. Because from that level, there is no problem. Problems only arise to paraphrase Gururaj, when you put your little eye in between, your set of opinions in between, 
your idea of being something separate or different in between and then problems arise then and and they are created you know created by you in reality they are not real so where does this energy come from well you know <laughs> but the, but the goodness i mean we all go back to what what was the beginning <laughs> they, they say they say that 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 which is was never born and will never die you know it's a saying uh, it's not within the space time framework so the question where does it come from that includes a space and time in the question doesn't apply to something which is beyond the space and time and this is very scientific according the big bang the big bang theory scientific physical theory says that all space and all time were compressed in in a dot one plank in size which is 10 to the minus 23 centimeters something like that so it's not that there was a lot of space empty space no there was no space it was in that dot and there was it is not that there was a previous time no there was no time all time was in that little plank thing so you know it's it's very counterintuitive but you know it means that the question doesn't apply it is you know when they ask uh, when moises asks god who are you i am that i am or i am what is which is more or less the same you know <laughs> don't ask me you cannot put a name on it you cannot try to define it because you cannot put a name on it, you know. You cannot put it as a form that comes from something. No, was never born, will never die. You cannot name it, you cannot describe it. You cannot conceptualize it, but you can experience it. Well, why is it then um, when we are able to be in touch with that experience of feeling good, and that there's a goodness and positivity and love and all of that. Why was it not evil? Why is it good? This energy that we're able to tap. Well, on. evil, good and evil are in, you know, judgments of the mind. I rather prefer to say positive or negative or expansive and contractive. Mm -hmm. So you might have a contractive feeling, you know, say you are feeling anger. Well, that feeling of anger that you have behind that feeling of anger, there is love. Uh, but the mind is playing a trick on you and it's making a judgment out of the situation or out of the thing that is putting a tag a judgmental tag into the situation that defines it as, as bad. And then you get angry because that person is bad, say, for example. Okay. But behind that anger, behind that anger is the same love. And this, this play of, of darkness and light uh, creates the forms. Which means that um, that that it is not that uh, precisely your question that had to do. You don't have to be inhibited. Which means you might have uh, patternings within you that you could judge as bad, and by that judgment make them create. Um, uh, you know, contractive emotions when accepting them without inhibition and naked, uh, they would not create contracting emotions, they would create expansive emotions. 
which means basically that you know you you don't need to judge and and good and bad you know you have to go beyond good and evil i mean good and good and evil is you know going back to moises or to to our bible which is the torah also for for the jews you know in when when god was in the paradise people could not take of a tree the tree of the signs of good and evil and what is the signs of good and evil well that one starts saying this is good this is bad and when they took of that tree they found themselves naked and they covered themselves because they thought it was bad to be naked and that's where the problem starts and they were thrown out of paradise why because they were starting to judge that this is good this is bad and that was what's, what's there for me and then then Cain and Abel what's there for me and then I want it all and then the history begins it's a metaphorical way nice poetical metaphorical way of describing the the evolution of human psychology of human mind or the of the human condition which is what all spiritual traditions have done throughout ages you know in in the in the old times the the metaphor and the mythological stories were very much used among other things because there was no printed paper so to make a story be remembered you had to make it into a story into into something that someone could tell someone and that could be repeated easily so that's why you know they they come like that but in reality they 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 are poetical expressions of ideas that uh, can be expressed today that we have a more sophisticated mind and understanding of reality to say the same thing with other words with another language okay thank you Ramon? Yeah. Um, I have, in, in listening to um, Guru Raj, I have some reactions for myself just reflecting on my own life. Mm -hmm. um, and in previous um, efforts and opening, I think in my own life, I have learned to some extent to view problems as opportunities. I think I've been able to get to that point where now when I feel great discomfort internally, I don't run. I may require some time to react, but I see it as something to, as something valuable. Um, and that's taken most of my life to get there. Yeah, it's easy to say, but difficult to achieve. Exactly. And so when I listened to Guru Raj, um, and, and this, this was a wonderful, um, a wonderful experience for me to see that video and to hear him be so logical, um, almost scientific in a way. Um, my reaction is that makes a lot of sense, particularly intellectually. Mm. And when I feel an intellectual inspiration, I get concerned because I have a tendency to go off into the weeds very deeply in intellectual sorts of things mm. and miss the point mm. and, and start a search that's an intellectual search, which is very easy to use in my life to avoid mm -hmm. real meaning, to avoid right. real healing, real heart. So my, I, I don't know if it's a question, but my reaction is, all right, that all sounds like a roadmap, an intellectual roadmap of great interest to me, but I don't want to focus so much on the interest and then start studying it because that will separate me from 
my own heart, I'll start looking at it as something that is some kind of um, intellectual truth instead of well, to me. Yeah, so, well, the, 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 the reality is that the only truth that you can find there is an experienceable truth. Now, the experienceable truth of this, you know, is found in, the, in, in living your life fully. It's, it's an experience. It's not a thought. It's not a concept. What Guru Raj does, uh, as you know, if you want to put it uh, like that, as an author, as a spiritual author, uh, and what Guru Raj works mean is that he brings uh, light and understanding to what this all story about the spirituality that you know today there is a great confusion because you have from you know from uh, i don't know the extremist christians to the extremist muslims to the new agents to you know it it's very much like in the times of the roman roman empire that you had hundreds of different religions and devotions of all kinds and flavors and everything, you know? So there is this big, this situation in, in which there is, uh, and people, people need, people need in their lives precisely to, to have, uh, to live that experience, not as an intellectual uh, uh, achievement, but as an experiential, uh, thing uh, uh, you know they need the roadmap and to accept a roadmap it has to be the the mind has to accept it the mind has to understand it the why and wherefores have to be understood so that then people can apply but this is a practical philosophy not a philosophy to start writing about the philosophy but a practical philosophy that that roadmap practice, and that's why the daily practices are so important, <laughs> that practice, uh, that roadmap leads you to, you know, things like stop seeing problems as problems, start seeing problems as opportunity, start being happy, being able to really get happy about living that problem because it is your opportunity to finally sort this thing out you know that that experience that is an experience you know when you are you act like that that is your experience this roadmap uh, is there to help people and many people will need this help and our you know uh, as an organization we are devoted to bring this help to others. Uh, uh, but it's that, that a roadmap for you to walk the path. Nobody can walk the path for you. And it's not an intellectual path. It's a path, you know, it's an experiential path. R right. That, that, that's helpful for me in, in a sense, because where I was going was, my feeling of wanting to listen to this and absorb as much as I can, but then put it aside because my feeling is that deep inside myself, I can understand this on an intellectual level, but my internal programming, little I, is so strong that actually getting to the point that he's talking about where I could feel myself being a part of all divinity, of divine life and my life being the same, is such a huge leap that I'm left with the question, how do I get there? I understand uh, it some of, but- I understand what you say. Well, let me tell, let me answer to that. Yeah, okay, look. Uh, 
it is only a slight change in reality. It's not a big leap. It might look a big leap, but it's just a slight change. It doesn't come through understanding. So there's no way that you will get there by thinking about it. It, it comes through assimilation of, 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 of the idea. So in religion or in meditation, in every, 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 every practice that you can find in any part of the world, you repeat something. Well, what Guruji was saying in that satsang is that you can repeat, I'm separate from God, or you can repeat, I am one with God. With the same energy that you repeat yourself, that I am separate from God, and we repeat that ourselves many, many times a day. If we only want to be aware, you see. You repeat yourself, I am one with God. And just repeat it enough number of times <laughs> and, and it happens by itself. So, you know, when you are feeling you are separate from God, so you are separate from whatever, you just say, I am one with God. And you just repeat it yourself. Use the same energy to repeat this other affirmation without worrying of any outcome, without trying to get any place, you just, I'm one with God. But just repeat that, keep repeating it, keep repeating it. And you know, that, that very idea will unpattern all the patternings that separate you apparently from that, that God, that divine oneness. As Guruji said, they asked him many, many times, can you get enlightened in one lifetime? Yes. And my answer is yes. He repeated this to satiation. You know, you might be lazy uh, or not determined or you don't know the why and the wherefore, or you are self-satisfied and it can take you a hundred lives. But if you want to do it in one lifetime, you can even do it in one day. But you could do it in six months. Okay, that's very helpful. I appreciate it. <laughs> not, not that I'm thinking it's going to happen in a day. No, or but you know, you, you don't want to search for it because if you are one with God, what the hell you are speaking about becoming enlightened when you are one with it? That's why the idea, if you want to become enlightened, that's I am separated from that divine. That's why you want to become enlightened. You think it's separate from you. Yeah. So instead of saying I'm separate from it, you say I'm one with it. So you are not wanting to be enlightened. You are already enlightened. You just repeat that. Yeah, that, that, there are different levels, and I can I can see a little a little bit of light way out there, um, and part of that is by recognizing the attractiveness of of pain of problems as doors, um, but also I recognize that it's so deeply inside me that I'm separate, that it's that the that it takes a lot, but your answer of just of just repeating makes a lot of sense to me in, in, in a way. Yeah, you, you start of... doing that. Another thing that helps a lot, that's why devotion is so important, is become devoted to your personal God. Whichever your heart can become devoted to. So that little by little you are not important, only your beloved is important. And then you start losing importance. And the moment you start losing importance, all those patternings start losing your grip on you. Because they are not important. You forget, you forgot yourself, forgotten with the lilies in the field, like St. John of the Cross says in the poem.
Thank you. More questions? No more questions? Half past five already? We say namaste then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Namaste. Okay, namaste. See you Saturday. Thank you, Ramon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. It's nice, these meetings, no? Very nice. It's like, you know, we are getting used, thanks to the pandemia, and it's not a bad way to keep yourself together with, with you know? No. It's it good. I think, I think it works very, very well, and I think the website is amazing. Um, so I'm Yeah, once we have that working... It's it's I it's gonna be good because it's it will have all the material also all the videos all this so it will be a good place you know to to bring everybody together and you know start having courses you know go to this online <laughs> online world <laughs> post pandemic new normality. <laughs> Thank you for putting all this energy into that. It's okay, it's a lot of people, eh? not only me. Yeah. I put my part, but there are many other people putting their part also. In many different ways. Okay. Thank you. Okay, see you next Saturday. Bye-bye. Namaste, everybody. Namaste. Namaste, everybody. Namaste. Namaste.